My name is Greg Meyer. I'm a state representative in North Carolina. I um, represent the area outside of Chapel Hill and I'm in my fourth term, I guess. Um, and I'm one of the co-chairs of our campaign committee. We, um, we really overhauled our program after 2018, even though we had three successful cycles of growth, we knew that we would have to use a different approach in 2020 than we had in previous cycles if we're going to get to a majority. And obviously none of us know what the 2020 election landscape is gonna look like, but here's what we do know about why we really have to change our approach. We uh, broke the supermajority last year by picking up um, 10 seats that, uh, that Clinton and our governor Cooper um, would not have won in 2016. And so we were running ahead of our 2016 performance, both of our legislative candidates and of the presidential and gubernatorial candidates. So we're different than Virginia, where what they were doing is they were picking up seats that Clinton had won and they just needed a legislator to win those seats. But we were successful in 2018 in that we won every seat where Governor Cooper got 45% of the vote or higher. So we were, we were performing at least five points ahead of the governor's average in 2016. We even won seats that went down to a Cooper performance of 42%, uh, but that was only one seat and it was one that cost a heck of a lot of money and had uh, a very well-known person running in it. So coming into 2020, um, we've basically won all of the suburban seats in our major counties. And for us to win the six seats that we need in the House, and the same thing is true in the Senate, if they want to win the five seats that they uh, are shooting for in the North Carolina Senate, we have to win in some districts where Democrats haven't been winning for a long time. Um, Exurban uh, and rural districts, some of which have significant Democratic voter bases, but not majorities. And in the 2020 cycle, we expect that there will be huge investments from presidential, Senate, and gubernatorial campaigns, but they don't have to win in the rural areas where we have to win to flip the legislature. Because they can run up the score in Charlotte and Raleigh and get 70% of the vote in my home county of Orange County, uh, but they only have to get 45% of the vote in Cabarrus County or Pitt County that are more rural. Uh, and they can still win those statewide races. So we have really focused on what is the approach that we need to take to be able to move those races from ones where Democrats have maybe only gotten 42 to 45 percent to where how we can actually win in that district, even if we don't have a huge organization coming to help us from those major statewide or national races. We think we've got great candidates, and I'm happy to talk about some of them. Um, but the real key for us is going to be uh, trying to figure out how to do adequate targeting and then direct voter communication. And um, we are really focused on uh, dropping this, the voter turnout score that we look at for our targeted races. So traditionally, um, in most political races, when you poll, you only poll people who are 40% likely to turn out or higher we're gonna pull people all the way down to 0% likely to turn out. And we're gonna look at the polling data from zero to 40% specifically to say, what are the people who are least likely to turn out saying right now? And so instead of, of creating our messaging um, to try and find the middle between left and right, we'll have multiple tracks of messaging, one to try and get as many of those swing voters as we can, but another path of messaging that will be targeted towards those low turnout but, high, but highly likely Democratic voters. And what is it that we need to say to them? How do we connect with them? And then give our campaigns a set of field tools to be able to go and find those folks, put volunteers and our candidates in front of them uh, as much as possible, and then try and convince them that even if they're frustrated or turned off by what's happening with presidential politics, we've got somebody that's running for them, for their local community, uh, and who can make a difference in their lives if we get uh, a majority in the legislature. So that's why we need your help. Um, I know that, that you exist to try and figure out how to help flip legislatures and you, you, uh, you are clearly focused on fundraising, which we deeply appreciate. The, the races that we have asked for 31st Street to support are mostly ones that will have a hard time raising money from within their district because they are not in 
affluent parts of the state. They are in parts of the state that are more rural, more uh, low income, and probably more disconnected from the major urban centers altogether. And so we will certainly be directing as many of our major donors towards these folks as possible. But whereas you might expect, in, in our case, an average legislative candidate to raise at least $100,000 from within their legislative district, these are folks who probably won't be able to raise that much from within their district. And so we're going to depend a lot on national partnerships like uh, 31st Street to be able to really help us figure out how to put these people across.